Okay, here we go. All right. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I am Meg Perry. I'm the director of admissions here at Solberry School. Many of you um, have met either myself or my colleague, Scott, Rashad, Jordan, here in the admissions office. But um, this is kind of a new role for me. Um, I am an advisor of probably a handful of some of your kids, um, as well as, you know, guiding people through the admissions process. So um, I am here in my role of Senior Capstone Experience Co-Director. Um, so welcome. I'm so happy to have you all here. And Lisa, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Pope. I know some of you from teaching your students in 10th grade. Um, and I'm just so excited to be doing this. So I'm still I'm still just teaching English next year of ninth graders and running the um, co-leading the 10th grade class. But so excited to be joining this tonight and to be part of this new experience and to share that with you. Awesome. So we have, we have, we're going to be very mindful of people's time tonight. We are not looking to spend hours here talking to everyone, um, but we just have some exciting news to share um, specifically for our seniors. Um, and, and we're pretty, we're pretty pumped about it. We have spent a lot of time this past summer um, getting ready for this meeting tonight. So um, we have a presentation that we're going to walk through together um, and give you all chances to, you know, ask questions and, and things like that. Um, so I'm going to get going here with sharing the presentation. And Lisa, I'm going to have you make sure that you can see it here. Yeah, looks good. Awesome. As Meg mentioned um, before we jump in, if you do have any questions along the way, we encourage them. We're just going to ask that you save them until the end because we have a dedicated time just for those questions and answers. Yeah. And just for those that are just joining us, this is going to be something that is, we are already recording it, um, so that if you need to, for any reason, go back and kind of revisit what we've talked about, or um, have people that aren't able to jump on from your family that you want to share it with, um, you're able to do so. So to get things kicked off here, um, we are here today because I think it's interesting to share that both Lisa and I are pretty passionate about the experience of seniors um, in this whole idea of a senior project or a senior um, shadow experience. We at Solberry are calling this the senior capstone experience, and Lisa will talk a little bit more about this. But um, kind of to get us started, I think we both have a pretty good reason for being here. You know, I grew up in Ohio and um, I was forced to do a senior project and I had to shadow a physical therapist and I did it for three weeks and I learned very quickly that I had no interest in physical therapy, nor would I want to study that in college or do anything of the likes. It's just not in, in my wheelhouse at all. Um, whereas Lisa wasn't even given the opportunity in her school at all. It wasn't just something that they didn't have the bandwidth for. And, and so both of us kind of came to it together saying, we need to do this. We need to offer this to our kids. This is super important for the Solberry experience. This amazing four years that the kids have had here. Some have had three with us. Some have had two. But the fact that they've learned so many great things here at Solberry putting it together and offering them this, this opportunity. So um, that's kind of where we open. Yeah, so our purpose tonight, as Meg had said, is we really wanna provide rising seniors and their families with an overview of the revamped senior capstone experience. So this was formerly called Senior Project. Um, and the reason it's renamed, why the new name, we'll get into that in the next slide, um, but there are increased support systems. Uh, with, um, <laughs> just ways that we can be more communicative and make this a partnership between not just the students and ourselves, but also with the sponsors and building our sponsorship network and the families along the entire way. Um, so this is our agenda for the evening. We're going to move into, well, what exactly is the senior capstone? Why the new name? 
Exactly. And we will talk about the timeline that we have set aside for this. Um, we will talk about the sponsorships and the ideas that we've put together around this. So um, again, Lisa mentioned it earlier. We just want to hold questions until the end because we will cover a lot of things here. Um, but we want to make sure we answer everybody's questions. And, you know, if you're thinking it, there's probably five other people on here who are thinking it as well. So so why the new name? Uh, really, the senior project has been going on for so long. And so this is, and we're grateful for that project and that experience that students have had, had that they've had over their years at Solbury. But Solbury has evolved over its time. And so the senior capstone experience is another sign of that evolution um, in Solbury's growth. So you can see on the right-hand side, our chart where it talks about senior capstone or what was senior project since 2017. And you can see 2017, 18, 19, we're really building that momentum 43 students in 2019 took part in the senior project. And for it not being mandatory, that's a huge number. It didn't even stop during COVID. Much credit to Martin who ran the program. We still were able to have a student engage in a senior project of some sort during COVID. And the very following year, bring 11 students back into that. And you can see we've been building that momentum ever since. Um, but we have gotten a lot of feedback based on stakeholders and what they've experienced, particularly students. Um, Meg and I both have rising seniors in our advisory who have talked about wanting to be a part of it and what they would need for that support. Uh, faculty and staff have had a lot of feedback um, that they've shared about the senior project and how to enhance it and help it evolve over time. And so the first thing that we'll address is the first support, which is a resource hub of information. We're going to show you that hub here in a second, um, but that is like a one-stop shop for students that they'll have access to the folder and it really will be a source of support for them. Um, Meg, if you want to talk about our second one, the extended outreach, this is huge and exciting. So one of the things that I think um, in from from talking to faculty and staff and our students is that while they had some great ideas of how they wanted to do their senior project, um, they didn't know where to begin. They didn't know how to reach people. They didn't know who to reach out to. And so one of the things that Lisa and I spent a great deal of time this summer, and you will continue to see this messaging in a lot of the things that come from Lisa and my um, communications, but also in the parent newsletters, alumni newsletters, things like that, is an outreach to our constituents, an outreach to families, alum, people in the community. Hey, do you want to sponsor a kid? Hey, do you want to have one of our Solberry students come and work with you, learn from you, those kind of things. So we are doing a ton of marketing work and, and partnering with a lot of different people here on this campus who are helping us spread the words to be able to bring this amazing directory, this amazing resource for the students to be able to tap into when it's time to solidify where they want to do their senior experience. We'll also have more one-on-one -on -one touch points throughout the year. We're going to show you uh, shortly a very detailed calendar. These events, um, these touch points start as soon as September when Meg and I are meeting one-on-one -on -one with every senior is the goal, whether they want to partake or not. We want to at least have that touch point with every senior to talk about, are you interested? If so, how can we support you? If you're not interested, is there anything that would change your mind? How can we help encourage you to take advantage of this amazing opportunity that you have? Um, and so we're going to have tons of those touch points, not just with our students, but also the families and sponsors. Again, we'll get more into that when we talk about the timeline, um, which leads to the more frequent check-ins. And so the touch points can be via email or video conferences, but we're going to have a lot of in-person one-on-one check-ins with our students in particular. And we're open to that with families as well um, throughout the entire experience. Again, that's starting in September and going all the way through April before the experience begins in May. One of the things that I just want to add to what Lisa was saying, too, is um, this has never been a mandatory requirement at Solberry School. Um, when Lisa and I put together our proposal to take this on, it was something that Tom felt pretty strongly that he didn't want something forced onto the students, especially with such limited like your seniors. They've heard about Senior Project and they've known about what it used to be. So to, you know, switch this, you know, kind of switch the script so quickly and say, oh, well, this is mandatory. Um, nobody felt great about that. However, it is something that 
we're going to be using a lot of class meetings talking about. Um, it is going to become part of the Solberry vocabulary. So students, we're hoping, um, with the support of teachers and other people here on campus, are going to be pretty excited about it. And we, Lisa, and my job is to make it so that there really aren't any obstacles in their way, that it truly is, hey, guys, I just, I can't do it this year. This is, I just can't take this on. But we are going to really try to make this something rewarding, exciting, and something that isn't blocking in any way so that they can sign on to do it. And what's really cool too is the way we've revamped the way we celebrate. Um, so we will again talk about this later in the presentation, but we have totally revised how students will showcase what they've done. And so it will no longer feel like an evaluative sort of panel uh, presentation. We have a variety of ways that it's really just a celebration and a showcase of everything they've done over the three weeks that they've engaged in the senior capstone experience. So more to come on that. So, so just to give you an outline of what the skeleton looks like of this whole situation, right? So this is an opportunity for the students to take the last three weeks of school um, and they are offered an opportunity that, again, they've been built, they've been working towards, we've been working with them, taking all of their skills that they've learned at Solberry School. You know, one of the things that we're super proud of as um, different faculty and staff members here on the campus is that our kids, A, you know, our kids go out, they are able to speak to adults. They are able to show how they know how to use time management. They are able to interact with people at all different levels of professional organizations and things like that. You know, our kids are doing so much of that throughout their time here at Solberry, and we're super proud of that. And so this is a moment, and that's kind of why it's called the Senior Capstone Experience. It's looking at all of these things that they're learning during their time and their interactions with people here on the Solberry campus and taking them out to their areas of interest and applying it, applying those skills, applying their different things that they've learned on campus here and seeing how that actually translate into the work world. Yeah, the benefits of that work, whatever they choose, extend beyond themselves. Um, and so we've had students do a variety of things. Uh, some students have stayed on campus. We had a student last year create a beautiful mural on campus. If you haven't seen it, I can't wait for you all to see it on campus this year. Um, we've also had students leave campus and go across the country to do certain work. Um, we might have students who want to hike the Appalachian Trail, which we think is so great and awesome. And we want to encourage every student to find the thing or the passion that they want to explore for three weeks. We just really emphasize that the benefit somehow, in some way, right, that there is going to be a benefiter outside of outside of their individual self, whether that be how they share that experience with others upon their return, or it's happening throughout the experience. We really wanna emphasize that this is customizable for the individual student. And so it's not going to look the same for every student. And that's why that one-on-one -on -one support between my, Meg and myself with the students and families and sponsors is so important um, because we encourage students that they partner with another entity, individual, organization, or local effort. Um, they might even want to partner with each other, which isn't something we've really done in the past where students could do a senior capstone or senior project together in some way. So we're really open to making this as customizable to a student's individual self as possible. One of the things that we have highlighted here is um, every student needs a sponsor, right? Um, they have an adult that they need to work with. Um, but Lisa and I are not just turning them over to you to deal with or for them to try to figure it out themselves. We're here for that. And that's what the importance of building that directory is and our individual meetings with your students throughout this entire process. You know, um, I, I both Lisa and I in our roles as advisors, we proofread letters, we look at essays, things like that. We're here for those things, right? You, okay, a student has a sponsor and is ready to write an email to them. Like, let's just take a look at it together. And is this something that you would write to a professional, not just to one of your friends or something that you'd put in a text message? Nope, we're gonna write it, you know, as a letter in an email, things like that. So, so that's what we're here for. And those are some of the things, but the students, we want them to feel proud. We want them to own this and say like, I've made those initial connections. I know how to do this. I know how to speak to adults and work with adults um, out in, in the work world.
So, and again, we talked a little bit about this a minute ago, but every senior can participate. It is not a requirement this year. Um, P.S. to any parents that have younger students, it probably will be a requirement in the future, but we're <laughs> at some point, this Maybe. is what our goal is, but it doesn't mean that that's what's in front of our students right now. This is truly meant to be a supportive and an exciting experience. Okay, so we talked a ton about the calendar, timelines, things like that, but let's actually dig in and take take a look at this. So September is upon us. That is next week. Um, so Lisa and I have divided up the senior class this year, and we will be doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of the seniors. We know that they have college in front of them. We know that they are like pulled in so many different directions. Lisa and my job is not to add anxiety to them in any way. Um, we are here for support. We are here to gauge their interest. Is this something they even want to do? That initial conversation just might even be like, hey, what are you interested in? What kind of things do you like to do in your free time? Getting to know them to help try to build that a little bit. And then identify what the next step is. Because like Lisa said, nothing we do at Soulberry is a canned thing. I mean, we really pride ourselves on individuality and, and kind of making sure that every kid's experience is a little bit different and, and very much them. That's what we're planning on doing here is to help identify what their interest is and then what their path looks like from there. And then in November, we're again meeting with seniors um, and talking about the next steps. You know, we're talking about the outreach to secure sponsorships. We're talking about their proposals and what the next steps look like after that. And just to emphasize before we jump into the proposal, um, those meetings that Meg and I are having throughout September and October, they are not 30 minute hour long meetings. They are 10, 15 minute, just brief meetings enough to establish a connection to then build further connection. So we don't want that first meeting to feel overwhelming. We know classes are just getting started. And again, this is not meant to cause anxiety. This is meant to relieve anxiety and offer complete support. So those initial meetings are smaller. And then when we meet with the students who are definitely participating in November, obviously those meetings would be a little longer depending on the student need. By the time it's January, it says January 31st, okay? So that's the deadline of the proposal. So if we can go ahead and just open up that proposal, Meg. Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. Hang on for one second. Let me go back, see if I can do it here. I wonder if it's because it's on present mode. Oh, you think maybe, oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, great. Can y'all see? Or we can, uh, Lisa, thumbs up. I can see, yep, I think okay. it's good. So the very first part of this form is just the checklist. That's just really grounding students and knowing what is happening each month that it's occurring. And so if we just scroll down a little bit, we are going to take time right now to go over the seven questions on the proposal that might help guide some of your own questions or answer them or prompt questions that lead Meg and I to add things to this proposal um, or consideration. So if we keep scrolling... Let's go to question one. So it says first and last name, and it says note, if you are requesting to complete a capstone project with another senior, list both of your first and last names. And that's just an emphasis. Again, we are open to that experience of having a student possibly work with another student while they do this. Um, that leads us to question two, which is just the parent and guardian names and contacts. And again, just emphasizing if you're working with another student that both of those sets of parent and guardian information should be included. We go down to question three. And this is where we get into the experience itself. So what is it you're proposing? Who would you work with in terms of a sponsorship? And again, you don't have to know that individual's name, but just an area of sponsorship like school, business, uh, entrepreneurship. Um, how did this experience connect or how does it connect to your interests and passions? Why is it important? Who besides yourself will benefit from this experience? Um, and where will you do this work? We are so open to where students do this work. In fact, if students wanted to go global, we are open to that as well. That's where the meetings and support come in. We are not getting the passports for students. We're not buying the plane tickets or um, you know, securing lodging. We are there to work with the student and family to say, okay, what are all the things that are needed so that the experience can come together? Um, question four is, if it's successful, how do you know? So name the criteria. If it works out in your um, ideal scenario, what would it look like, feel like, sound like? And then number five is a need assessment. 
So in what ways um, does your project idea address a need? So how did you become aware of this need? What other research did you do to, con to conduct um, an assessment of the needs that are most needed to be met? Oftentimes we have students say they wanna do something, but that need assessment hasn't taken place. And so it doesn't end up working out always the way they had hoped. So we're gonna try to prevent that here with question five. And then number six is who is your sponsor? Now, if students already know for sure the name, the individual, their email, all of that, great, we encourage it. But if you have not secured a sponsorship, if the student doesn't know who's gonna sponsor them, that's completely fine. We do not want that lack of knowledge to prevent them from submitting a proposal. This is where they write the fields of interest they wanna pursue. The more specific they can be, the better, because that's where Meg and I are really combing through these proposals and saying, okay, what does this student need? All right, going through our directory of resources, who might we be able to uh, partner with them? So that when we meet with the student about their proposal, we're offering resources. We're not just going over their proposal. We're coming to the table with some solutions and some ideas and um, potentials. And then finally, that leads us to question seven, which is what support do you need from Lisa and Meg? The more thorough they can be in their own support needs, the better we can support them. Maybe they're concerned about their AP test, which is happening right before the capstone experience. Maybe the timeline is overwhelming or they just have a lot of anxiety. We're here for all of it. Um, so that is the proposal intentionally brief because of everything that's also right after college essays and a lot of um, college applications are being submitted. So again, we wanna make it realistic and manageable. Once those proposals are submitted in March and April, then we're meeting again with all of the seniors where we discuss them. Maybe we pause them to say, let's figure out some other paths based on your interests. This is also when we start officially communicating with parents and guardians beyond informational. Um, this is where we reach out to you and say, okay, are you comfortable with your student wanting to do this? This is where we're guiding them. These are the potential sponsors we're looking at. What concerns do you, the parent have or the guardian have that you can share with us? Because it really is just a partnership. Um, so March and April will be a heavy time of communicating with parents and guardians. We'll also review the showcase that will be coming up. And Meg's gonna talk about that next because we already have it saved on the calendar. Um, and then finally, it says information shared with faculty and it's got the asterisks and the highlight because this is something that has happened happened um, somewhat in the past, but we really want to enhance it, uh, to blow it up, so to speak, in terms of celebration that we are sharing more with faculty about what specific kids are doing, what things, how cool it is, um, so that the students can be celebrated before and during and after their experience. All right, so in May is when the show happens, right? The kids are going to leave us here at Solberry. Um, some of them may end up staying on campus. And, and you know, like we said, that's also an option as well. Um, Check-ins, right? So we are going to, part of the meetings with our students up until this point is that we're going to be talking about check-ins and reflection and journaling and doing different things throughout their time so that we're getting some feedback from them of how's it going and, and really leading with questions beyond, I mean, we all, like we all have kids, we know that they're like one word answer is sufficient. So we want to help lead those, those um, responses from them. And, and, and so that's where going back to partnering with you, you know, this is stuff that we will be sharing with you, we will be talking about with parents so that um, you can mention things to your students as well, you know, and we'll be looking at their journaling, we'll be helping with their reflections. Um, some of the prompts will be set up where they're just a one sentence written prompt, two sentences, a video prompt, send us something, you know, on your iPhone, send it back to us real quick, just ways for us to check in on them um, throughout this process. Also, you know, Lisa and I will be talking to their sponsors throughout this as well. We will be the point of contact representing the school while your students are out um, in those particular organizations and doing those experiences. So we will be the contact to the, with the sponsors. We will be checking in with sponsors to make sure that the role is being fulfilled and that our kids are representing themselves in the school in the best light. And, and quite honestly, there have been so many different examples of how students and can use this for college process and talking about an essay because they had this amazing experience and things like that. You know, this is a moment where they can hopefully use these great experiences and the support of their supervisor and their sponsors to 
who knows, maybe you need a recommendation letter. You know, these are where these things all start for, these experiences are where these things all start for the students. And then Meg, do we already have a date to celebrate students? I think we do. We do. We got it approved on the calendar already. So Tuesday, June 3rd from 4.30 to 7 p.m. And this is truly something we know not all parents can get here to campus, um, but it is something that we are hoping is a huge celebration for the entire community, right? This is our initial group of students who are going to be doing this. Great examples for the younger students below them to see the things that the possibilities, the things that can happen. So um, we have it set for June 3rd. We are inviting everybody. We want everybody there. It's going to be amazing. That's, yes, yeah. that's exactly why we're starting it at 430 as well, is that we want to encourage, especially our rising seniors the following year, so our current juniors, we want them to come at 430 if possible and meet with the seniors and have that time to really connect so that the seniors, before they're even showcasing it to the parents, they're having that connection with our community firsthand, enc encouraging them, inspiring them, and sharing what they've done themselves. Um, in the past, the panel presentations were later in the evening and took place sometimes over a few days, so we've revamped that uh, to be more of a celebration. Now, we're not sure yet if it's going to be in the gym and then also the wrestling room. The format of that is still going to really depend on what the students themselves do. We might have some students who make a documentary and we want to air that at a particular time. Other students may not feel comfortable with that and they would rather do like a trifold and just have people come up and talk to them. So we're really open to how they showcase their work. Um, but we, it's really just celebration. Refreshments are included. Uh, so please do mark your calendar. I know it's months and months away, uh, but we would love as many of you to be there as possible. Um, and if you can't be there and you really wanna experience it, we also want you to let us know because we can find ways to have that moment shared with you. All right, so our resource hub, we talk so many, and we keep using the word resource, 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 we're resources, your resources, all of these different things. So Lisa and I have built a, what we call the resource hub. Um, and so Lisa's gonna talk a little bit about the idea behind this and inspiration. Let's click the hub one, not the, yep. yeah, let's click that one. So you can see right now, I mean, it's pretty bare, right? Cause it's being developed over time. Uh, the proposal form, up, oh yeah, it's all good. Oh, Hold great. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, okay. there we go. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So we have the folder already that has the proposal that you've already seen. We'll also have a commitment form in there as well. Um, that will be what students fill out come November if they are committing to the process of senior project. We also have this document called Senior Capstone, 46 Ideas for Inspiration. So we can go there. Students don't have to look at this document, but so many um, express not knowing exactly where to start or where to even consider their interests. And so we put together uh, 46 different ideas based on these categories. We're not going to go over each idea, um, but there are that many, and we're going to build that over time. So what's 46 now, maybe 75 next year. Um, but you can see all of these categories. These are the very same categories that we are seeking sponsorship in um, through our alumni network and our families and our friends of Solberry and the community partners that we have. So we want that to align very very clearly of our sponsorship directory and the ideas we're presenting so that a student doesn't feel like, wait, I had this idea, but there's no inspiration for that. Again, if there is a category outside of what's listed here, we're open to that and we'll add it to the resource list um, as time goes on. If we leave this document um, and go back to our slides, other things that are going to be added, um, these slides from this presentation will be added to that resource hub as well for students. And then we're really excited. We just got the Canvas page made today. So it's not in the hub yet, and it won't be in the hub because it's Canvas. But Canvas is like a separate classroom page. It's what us classroom teachers use. I have a Canvas page for my English classes. Students are very familiar with Canvas because it's what they use for academic classes and electives. And so we're going to have a separate Canvas page just for the senior capstone experience. And that's where all the deadlines will be posted and more resources. But what we love about it is the discussion board. We really want students to be able to talk to each other in that Canvas page about what's going on or any struggles they're having so that even beyond their um, senior capstone leader, whether it's myself or Meg, they have each other for support as well. Um, and then behind the scenes, let's talk about that directory, Meg, because it's behind the scenes. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Okay, wait, here we go. 
Lisa, why can't I get to it? Because it's not linked because it's behind the scenes. Oh, right. <laughs> Why can't I find it here? So our sponsor directory, it will be something that continues to build as we talked about with all of these different areas. It is not something that we are going to openly share with the students. Um, we have some very excited students and we want to help manage the amount of communicating that they're doing with their sponsors. So we are gathering this list, this directory, so that we can give them some options of people in the different areas, but we don't wanna just turn the whole thing over so that they just go down the list like it's uh, yellow pages and just start you know, reaching out to every single person on the list. We wanna be respectful of both sides, the student's time as well as the sponsors and, and their time as well and their commitment. All right. Awesome. Okay. How can parents support? Consider sponsoring a student. That's right. one. Um, but you don't have to, obviously. But if you have that little tugging on your heart, we welcome it. Um, even if it's next year and your child has graduated and you still want to be a part of that Solberry community in that fashion, we encourage it. Um, keep going, Meg. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we both have been working on a lot, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, is um, a lot of the different marketing channels that we have open to us here at Solberry School, um, where we can reach out to potential sponsors, reach out to people who are doing cool things in their own work. You know, our parent network has been amazing during things like Arts Week and STEM Week and different times where we call on parents to share what they do for a living with our students. And so this is another moment to do something like that. Um, our teachers are a wealth of knowledge. I mean, I don't know how many of you have ever run into Scott's like brain directory, but Scott Eckstein seems to know everybody everywhere doing everything. So we have a lot of those people here on our own campus um, that, we're, that we're tapping into and, and reaching out to them and having them share some of their connections so that we will be able to pass that on to the students. And like we said earlier, there is going to come a time where communication between um, the parent and guardians and ourselves is going to increase. And so we just ask that you keep those lines of communication open um, to make it accessible for us to reach you because we really do not want to send any child out onto a senior capstone experience when we haven't communicated with home um, and feel really confident that that partnership is there. So please just keep those lines of communication open with us. And if there's any issues about communication, come right to us. We're very receptive um, and we're really just here to support. So if there's a support you're not feeling along the way, we ask that you not keep that inside. We ask that you reach out right away and it doesn't matter how it comes off. I mean, try to be nice, but you know, if you're feeling frustrated, we're here for it. Like, let's talk about it. Let's think about what we can do better. Meg and I, both of our intentions here is to support as much as possible possible and we're but we're flawed and we might overlook something or not realize something and so we do we want you to feel comfortable reaching out directly to us at any time and it truly is you know it, it's it's our our goal and your goal is to have happy kids through this process right and and just like lisa and i both do with advisory right like i can't tell you how much i tap on the parents as much of like hey if something if they're saying something at home let me know so I can work on it here at school as well and vice versa, right? We're just better as a team. And so we will be constantly communicating to you guys so that you can say like, oh, did you have your meeting with Meg today? Oh, you know, I heard about this is going on. And and we don't want it to be really generic. We, you know, as it comes up naturally, that's amazing. But we are looking for parents to be part of the accountability chain as well here and making sure that all the T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and that the kids are in enjoying their experience, but also um, representing the school as well. Yeah, and there's going to be opportunities for that organic communication to occur with you and your child or children, um, because we're going to be communicating with you via email about when certain deadlines are due, and that's not to be sort of a... Um, you know, that's not meant to be evaluative or cause anxiety for the student. We really just want the parents to know, hey, these are when the deadlines are, this is what's happening. And so you'll be getting communication about that. And that's a great time if you see that email to prompt that question to a student like, oh, I saw that this is due. What are you thinking about it? And that's a good way to, to get started. 
All right. So we have covered a lot. Lisa and I have spoken a lot to everyone <laughs> here. So um, I we are going to open this up a little bit to, to questions. We feel like, as I said earlier, if one parent has a question, there's probably five more people on this call that have a question as well. So um, one of the things that did come up that somebody um, asked was, is there going to be a recording of this? Yes, I am going to actually follow up tomorrow um, with a lot of information, including this particular recording. So you can go back through and if anybody came in a little bit late, they can jump in there, things like that. So we have our first question. Beth, do you want to unmute yourself so that you can ask your question out loud? Sure, thanks. Um, I am... Uh, my questions are more around the logistics of how this works. Is it full time? What do you do at the end of school? When do you take your finals? What if you're you're not doing it? You're in class and then you're the only one in class and everyone else is off doing this. I, I don't quite understand yeah. the yeah, specifics I mean, the Jonathan, around that. That's a great question, Beth. And it's something that um that, you know, again, is is probably on everybody's mind. So traditionally, and what we will follow as well is seniors will actually take their final exams or whatever the, uh, you know, last assignment is before this particular experience happens. So they, and this has been the same tradition for years. All seniors or just seniors doing this? Seniors, yes. seniors doing this, just seniors okay. doing this. They will be working with their teachers, knowing that they're going on, and we will be working with their teachers as well, knowing that they're going on this capstone experience. So they will have all of their academic obligations completed prior to the start of this particular experience happening. And they don't come back on campus unless they're working on campus. If their capstone experience involves being on campus, then they would be here. Otherwise, they are not required to be on campus during those three weeks because they're engaging in their experience. Um, but in the past, there's been an hour requirement, 30 hours per week or so forth. We want to work individually with each student and not just have a blanket. It's got to be 40 hours because the experiences could be so vastly different um, that that just doesn't feel like it makes sense. So, Beth, if your child or your student um, does decide to participate in the senior project or the senior capstone experience, we would put parameters about how long and what they would be doing, but it would really depend on what they chose. And is it the same for boarders and day students? So with Borders and Day students, it is the same. Knowing that Borders live here on campus, we have worked with Peter Redman, who is our Director of Transportation, to work out how it will work for students if they have a great idea and it's something off campus that they need help getting to. We are working with the Transportation Department for that. Um, there are some students that, like Lisa said, are pairing up with another student so that they can do their capstone project together, and that helps with some transportation, different things like that. So again, going back to what Lisa said earlier, this is very individual, and that's why we have this long timeline as well, so that we can go through all of this with the students, looking at different avenues to make sure that this happens. It is really important to us, Beth, and, and for everybody that equal opportunities happen between day students and boarding students. We don't want for any reason a student to feel like, well, I'm a boarding student, so I can't have the same opportunities that the day students have. That is not the intention here. If it means that we're driving kids places and, and helping kids get settled into things, we will work to facilitate all of those things with it. Lisa, do um, you Yeah, let me jump in real quick too, because we've had some boarders that they actually move out um, when the senior pro or the senior capstone begins, and that's also an option because where they're going isn't local. Um, and so it could look like that too, where if your student is a boarder and they want to do something closer to home or wherever it may be and staying on campus isn't feasible or realistic, they can move out sooner. And we've had students do that in the past. I'm going to jump. Uh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask about the cost as well. So are the parents bearing the cost of whatever the experience is? Yes. So, so as far as what the cost is involved, it really depends on what the student is doing. Um, some of the kids that we've had in the past, like they've done the mural that we talked about, you know, we worked with the art department for that one student who was doing the mural here on campus, using some of the supplies that we had here on campus. Other students, one of my one of my students last year was doing something um, with a local elementary school teaching biology for that school. 
school. Um, and so some of the supplies that he had for dissections and things like that was paid for by the school that he was working in. So again, it is going to depend on the situation. Things like flights, things like um, visas, if that's necessary, or passports and things like that, that would be to the, the fam on the family. And this is where having conversations with parents, if they're like, look, I'm not willing to make this be a whole big thing. And so then that gives us the heads up that we're going to keep it something a little bit lower scale, a little bit local resources, that kind of stuff. I think we Dana and Elizabeth both Okay, have thank you. Yeah. Elizabeth, yeah. I think, had mentioned something. Has oh, a hand sorry. This is, this is Dana. Um, oh, it's, hi, Dana. It's quick. It's just off of that other one. Um, with the finals, how about the AP exams? How have they navigated that? This is right after AP exams. So the students okay, take, great. Yeah, they don't miss AP tests at all. Okay, thank you. And Dana, just to jump in on that, we've had a couple of kids, you know, every once in a while, we have some kids with like specialized AP exams, or they're taking something that not kind of the mass group is taking. And so we have worked it out in the past where students will come back on campus to take their APs. That's a time that they're putting a pause on their particular opportunity. Um, and so that's where we're working with the sponsors to say like, hey, you know, so-and-so is taking an AP exam here on campus, won't report that particular day to their, their job, their role, whatever it is, but they'll be back tomorrow, things like that. Excellent. Thank you. Of course. Elizabeth, I think you have your hand raised. I do. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you. This is so thoughtful and I love the supportive environment around it. Like it's, it's wonderful. My question is and on the back of Beth's. So if the, if the seniors who participate are finishing three weeks earlier, um, I know that sometimes they're teaching right up into that last week. Does that mean that it's a different sort of, and again, I have a, I have a, a kid who um, gets extra time for assignments and, and needs it but I think would really benefit from an experience like this. So I'm just wondering, you know, is there flexibility in and how we get them through their final exams? And Absolutely. 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 And yeah. that's part of also why Meg and I want to increase our communication with faculty about what is happening so that we can even have those conversations with the student after we've had conversations with teachers. So to answer your question, yes, definitely there's flexibility and accommodation um, for those scenarios. And uh, we plan to have increased communication with the faculty so they're better able to prepare uh, for those situations. Likewise, if your student decides not to do senior project and they are still in their classes, when their peers, we've had situations where classes went from having 10 students to two students. Um, it's sparking conversations with faculty this year about how to make sure that those students are engaged in meaningful experiences through the end um, so that they don't feel like, oh, I didn't do that. And now this doesn't feel as worthwhile either. We really want it to be great for everyone, regardless of which road they go. Fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. And just so everybody knows, we are actually presenting this to the entire faculty and staff tomorrow. Um, so they are as excited as everyone has been about this whole situation. A lot of people are like, what are you going to talk about? Tell us, give us a heads up of what's going on. Um, so we will be, you know, th th there's just th ever since day one, when Lisa and I sat down with Tom and Steve Buteau about this, there's been such support for this. We feel we feel so supported as the adults running this this program. Um, and so just the excitement around it is something that we're really we're really happy with and yeah. how it's been received by the community has been pretty incredible actually. Rosie, you have a question. Yes, I think all all of the questions, my questions are here. I, I you know it have been exposed as you know, it's a little bit, if, let's say, if Kalia wants to come to Mexico and do a project, is that possible? Yeah. Yes, it is. It absolutely is, Rosie. And that's something where we'll, we'll communicate with you. You know, in the years past, we've had students go back home to China and Japan and, and Korea to do their particular experiences. Um, Rosie, what we'll work closely with you on is looking at the dates of this. And then of course, looking at Kalia's graduation date and how the coordination of all of that will work. So we'll have lots of conversations with Kalia about it, but also with you as well. Okay. And if she wants to go like, to, let's say Spain or whatever, it's possible. Absolutely. It's possible. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Of course. Yeah. Um, it looks like Jeff has a question. <laughs> 
It's actually Kathy. This is oh, uh, hey, Kathy. Kathy. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> uh, Jeff's name is on this. Um, <laughs> so I know that the, you know, you've talked very much about um, the, everything is open. Everything is available. Um, are there any hard guardrails that we should be following in terms of what we shouldn't do, what we can't do? Yeah, I think honestly, the the biggest guardrail that Meg and I believe in is who this benefits. So if, and that's where your conversations with your student are really important too, is that this, whatever they choose really should be, it can include themselves and, and focus a lot on themselves, but they're really, it should extend to others in some capacity in some way. And that can be creatively done. Um, but that is where, that's the hard line. We are not saying there's any guardrails other than even like in the past, making money was not a possibility through the senior project. Um, that was a guardrail that students could not receive money on that. And then something happened in the past where it was like, oh, that doesn't actually make sense in this scenario. So I hate to not have more parameters and Meg, you can jump in too, but really the one that I know of is it, it has to benefit beyond yourself and it has to have parental or guardian support. Yeah, I mean, I think that in the past, and again, at no fault of of anybody's, I mean, it was approved and things like that. Likely somebody who's just going to go take yoga class four days a week, it's probably not going to get approved. Like that's probably just not going to happen. I know yoga is better for everybody in multiple ways, but that's kind of not what we're looking for. We really want, if the student wants to co-teach a yoga class or put on a yoga class for little kids, like those are things we can totally get behind. But like Lisa said, just kind of singularly going in and saying like, I'm going to just basically go work out at the gym for three weeks on Solberry's time. Yeah. That's like not great. Plus we're, it's probably gonna be really hard to give a presentation at the celebration on you just working out for three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, however, going back to what Lisa said, you know, one of my kids a couple of years ago um, in the vein of not making money, she runs a very successful Etsy shop actually, like actually very successful. Um, and so she took some time actually during her senior project and built out an entire business plan for her Etsy shop, including starting to do some of the prep work of what was going to be going on sale and things like that. I mean, I would be a hundred percent all for that. And we would get some sponsors and things like that. Like she had some great contacts in her community, um, around her designs and things like that, as well as Kirby and Erica here, who are also great sponsors for her in the art department. So again, parameters, Kathy, not necessarily guardrails, maybe some parameters on what that actually looks like. Um, but, but also just really looking at each kid's interest individually and, and trying to make it work. Great. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Michelle? Yeah. Hi. Wait, you might have to. Okay, I'm just unmuted. So sorry about that. Uh, Rory's getting a haircut, so I'm sitting in the salon actually, <laughs> <laughs> multitasking. Hi, um, I said hi. <laughs> so, um, Rory is a boarder, so I'm not sure how this will play out. But if Rory chose to stay, um, they have an internship at the Manitowoc, our public library, this whole summer and love it. They're doing that on campus. Um, so I suspect that Rory'd want to do something like in a library or museum with archival work, and so if they decide to stay on campus. Um, finding the resources to those places, like, would you guys be able to help them like, hey, there's this museum, this would be like, you're telling me what you're interested in, we can help you like, start the process, I guess is what I'm asking. That's yes, that's yeah. exactly what it would be like. The only caveat there, and I guess this would be a, a guardrail, is that we would not do the communication with that entity for worry. Um, we would partner Rory in the sense that we would give them access to, hey, here's a bunch of people that we approve you reaching out to from our sponsor directory, right? Or here's some things to consider. And we would help them write the email or practice that conversation or think about what they needed. But then Rory would actually make the contact. Okay. Yeah, and the cool you. thing there, Michelle, just to give you an example and kind of tying in, one of the people we've talked a bunch to actually, Hannah Howe, our librarian, she has hosted students here, but also has great connect. I know Rory's worked with Hannah, actually. I know that they have that connection. So it wouldn't be asking Rory to do that again. However, 
Hannah is a wealth of resources and, and, and a wealth of information. Holly Victor is as well. Holly's got a, a huge amount of knowledge in the museum world as well. So, so we've got some great people here that are part of that directory. And, you know, it might be, if I'm sitting down with Rory, I might say like, hey, let's go walk over and talk to Holly right now. Like, let's just sit down and have a quick conversation with Holly and pick her brain at this moment about some of the things to start that conversation and start having Rory or any of your kids, you know, start thinking about things. Again, we have so many great resources, even just right here on campus to tap into, but that, that sponsorship directory is really what we're going to be really leaning on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see something in the chat. Oh, when is graduation? Um, that is on Saturday, June 7th. June 7th, Rosie. Mark your calendar. Got to be there for that. No, the thing is, I was wondering, you know, if I want to be here, there, you know, at school on the 3rd, and well, I will have to be more days, you know, it's just planning. It, right. It's just a planning situation. Right. That's good. Good plan. Other questions? Any, any other questions that we have here? So, you know, just to kind of wrap up and again, be mindful of time. We appreciate you even being here for this. Like this is, this is like, so, oh my God, we were both so nervous about this whole thing just to be like full of disclosure. <laughs> we were like, what if nobody comes no, to we were, no, we were fine. <laughs> You like invite everybody to a party and nobody shows up. Um, yeah. But, you know, so we were we were really excited. We have so much excitement about this. And I think because of the support that we've gotten about this, change is good. And our, mm -hmm. our students, our kids are so excited about this. I've talked to a bunch of them who've been here on campus for preseason and they're like, what, what's the deal? What's well, everybody wants to know what's going to be required of them. But um you know, there, there's there's a buzz, there's excitement. And so it, it really is a time for us to to really be excited. They're seniors. They're like going out there in the world, as scary as that is, but mm -hmm. it's happening. And so we want to get them ready for that um, and just try, you know, our biggest, what is going to be such a win for me looking at this is when they come back to me in a couple of years and they're out in the work world and they're like, Dang, I'll, I'll, I'll sponsor a Solberry kid. Like I'll, yeah. I'll take him to work with me. Like, whoa, whoa, what a win, right? Like that's going to be amazing. So we, we are really looking for this to be a partnership for this to be exciting. We're all going to learn from it, right? This is what we do as parents is we maybe screw up our first kid and then move on and make it better and better and better. I'm just saying. Um, but you know, I, I think it's something that we're all going to grow together and it's just going to be, um, a great experience. So, so we are here for you as parents. We are definitely here for those kids as seniors. Um, and, and we're excited about what's to come. If a question arises later tonight, tomorrow, whenever, just reach out and email. We're happy to talk about it. Um, and we'll be communicating with you along the way. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So much. Have a yeah. great night. Can't wait to work with you. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.